So I have a clock oscillator that I haven't used for a while and I got it plugged in and I'm just uh, checking a few things out with it and I thought I would take and uh, use the pulse function that comes out of that clock oscillator and uh, do a test with it and figure out the uh, velocity of propagation in this piece of cable right here. The uh, oscillator puts out a 10 microsecond long pulse every second. You can see the triggered uh, indication here clicking every so one well once per second and uh, puts out about a four and a half volt pulse and the rising edge on this is fairly quick it's a little less than two nanoseconds so um, it should give us a decent reading anyways and uh, I just wanted to show another thing here too before we carry on with this and I've got it terminated with 50 ohms so our signal comes in down here on this piece of coax goes across this T and as it flies by the uh, channel 1 here, it shoots on down the 7 foot piece of cable here and comes in over on the other side where there's another T. The scope itself has got 1 mega ohm input so it doesn't properly terminate this. So I've put a 50 ohm termination on the, on the end of the cable here. And if we take that 50 ohm termination off, we can see what happens to our signal here with the, with the ringing. Every time there's a quick transition like this and it hits an improperly terminated uh, transmission line. This is some of the stuff you get and you can see it happens again down over here so we'll put that 50 ohms back on and then we'll expand that trace out and uh, make some measurements. So we're going to get this cranked up to 2 nanoseconds per division and I've put the cursors on here. Um, these cursors are uh, on the channel well they've got an A and a B cursor and uh, you can see channel 1 is the yellow trace here and channel 2 is the blue trace. So as the signal flies by we see the leading edge uh, showing up on our channel 1 right here and then it has to go down through 7 feet of cable and gets over to the channel 2 input and that's where it's detected here. Now I've set the, uh, the termination or sorry, the uh, the trigger right here. So I've set the at the same spot on the trigger line. So I've used that because this is out in the middle, kind of over here. So I just wanted something, you know, that I could get the uh, cursor set to. So we can see our cursor here, and we can see the difference between the two of them is 11.42 nanoseconds, and it's roughly at about the middle here. So we're, we're roughly at the same spot on both sides. So that, that gives us a reasonable measurement. So this is how long it takes for this to go, this pulse, this leading edge, to go down this cable. So we'll do a calculation and we'll figure out what the uh, velocity of propagation is in that piece of cable. So here's our calculation using the results that we, we've come up with. Uh, our cable length as measured is 213.5 centimeters, which the seven foot cable. Uh, we go through a couple of T's, so I decided to add a tiny bit for that. So uh, our approximate length is 216.5 centimeters for our between our, our two inputs on the scope. The time as measured on the scope is 11.42 nanoseconds. So we're going to plug those into our simple formula here for the velocity factor. Here's the length of our cable. Here's uh, velocity of light. 300 million meters per second and that's see that right here and here's the time that we measured from the scope which is the 11.42 nanoseconds and we calculate this out and we get these two numbers here and then we do the division and this is our final result 0.632 which is 63.2 percent for the velocity factor in that piece of cable. Um, the cable does not have a label on the outside telling me what kind of cable it is but I'd be willing to bet that it's uh, RG58CU, uh, given the number that we see down here. It's probably a polyethylene, solid polyethylene di dielectric, and it's uh, quite a flexible cable, so that's a good chance it's the CU version of 58. So why would we want to know the velocity of propagation? Uh, if we're going to make some uh, tuning stubs as an example, we're going to use them in a phasing um, on an antenna. Uh, say uh, to phase the elements on an antenna uh, or we want to make say a notch filter that sort of thing using the uh, using a T uh, you can make stubs of the cable and uh, if you have a reasonable idea of what sort of velocity of propagation is you would cut those stubs ever so slightly longer probably and then you would trim them a tiny bit so 
Um, knowing that you're not going to waste a lot of cable by making, um, you know, large errors in the length of what the cable should be. So it's a it's a handy thing to know.